Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and I'm here with our 13.1 low elo tier list. Our regular tier list video which we post with the patch rundown and the mid patch updates is aimed at around a high gold to platinum skill level. This one covers everything below that. Obviously any tier list is a bit nuanced but in general this is a great way to know what champions to pick and which ones to avoid to instantly give you a better shot at winning your solo queue games. Before we get into the tier list, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and other content are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and they're available 24-7, so it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your ProGuides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now, on to the tier list. First, we'll start off with the top laners. Zach has been doing super well in the top lane lately, that along with other top laner performers like Mundo and Fiora being nerfed, as well as Jack Show being buffed, means that we're definitely gonna be moving him up to the OP tier. When Zach is strong, it's just not really fair. He's insanely beefy, and with the sustain from his passive and his exceptionally high damage over time for such a tanky champion, he feels like he brings just a bit too much to the table. And it's not like it's easy to just kite and avoid him. His engage range is massive, and he can fly in over any wall, making him a huge threat to enemy backlines. With those aforementioned nerfs, we'll be moving Muno down to the A tier. While we could be wrong, we're still fairly confident that he'll be at least the lower end of a good type of pick. He has good scaling, but you won't get there as freely as before. Kled moves up to the A tier this patch. He's been performing well, and with so many other top tier picks being nerfed, it's just natural that more picks will be slowly moving upwards on the tier list to take up some spots. Fiora has always been a champion that has done better in pro play and super high elo than the middle and lower ranks. She has been so broken this preseason that even without mechanics she looks strong, so that hasn't been the case. Even in silver, she's still a top performer. But this patch of nerfs could really reel her in a bit, so we're moving her down to the B tier here. Shivana also drops down to the B tier. Previously, Shivana could sat check most champions by just forcing trades on them over and over in lane, and eventually, she would just be able to scale up into a monster of a tank slash AP bruiser hybrid. But the seemingly minor nerf to her ease on hit damage on 12.23 has made it a lot harder to force those trades early on, and now, she's in a pretty mediocre spot. Gwen moves up to the B tier. She's a good situational pick against super beefy foes, but you should never be picking her outside of that. By the way, one really important note for actually making Gwen work is bringing the right summoner spells. TP Ignite may be a popular combo, but it is bad. You should always run Ghost with either Teleport or Ignite. Gwen needs Ghost, not Flash, for good mobility and sticking power. Without it, you may as well consider right back down in the C or D tier. Gangplank is a champion whose performance is affected very much by the player's mastery. He tends to always land in the D tier and lower ranks, but he's so strong with the current items in the game that even down here, he's doing better than normal. But that's still only enough for us to move him up to the C tier. Jason's buff this patch will help him quite a bit, but not really enough to make him something worth picking up. Like JP, we're moving him from the D to the C tier here. Even in a good lane, you can definitely find a better pick. Vladimir is struggling bad in the top lane. Whether it's a tank, bruiser, or some other carry, pretty much any meta pick is able to bully you hard early. His scaling is ridiculous, but you don't really get the chance to come online. A 2 item spike doesn't mean much when the other people are at 3 or 4 items. We're moving him down all the way to the D tier. Now for the jungle, here's our tier list. Udyr is back up to the OP tier of this patch, while Raid did give out a decent nerf to his Q, making the Prowler's Claw build quite a bit more reliant on snowballing to be as effective as before, there are other mythic options for him. The Trinity Force builds allows you to go AD, but with more bruisery items, so you don't have to be a one-shotting machine to be useful. The Jack Show build works exactly like the old tankier builds. You build Demonic Embrace, Jack Show, and then full tank, making you pretty much unkillable in fights. But you still deal really good burn damage, and with Jack Show getting a buff this patch, he'll be looking even better. We'll be moving Fiddlesticks up to the S tier of this patch. He typically does a little bit worse in the lower ranks than in high elo, but with so many other strong meta picks being nerfed lately, there's more room for him to move up. Fiddlesticks is a super elo inflating champion. You don't really need good mechanics to make him work. The key is just using his ultimate on cooldown, but using it in the right place. Early game, that's as simple as going into a lane that you'll have the easiest time collecting kills in. Typically, this means immobile foes or allies that have CC or good damage to follow up. As the game goes on, you need to focus on clearing vision and ulting from the fog of war. If you manage to do that, you'll very easily find yourself solo carrying games, even from a big deficit. Riot really likes to yo-yo the changes for Ramis. It feels like he's gone from good to really bad like 6 times in the past few months, and they're keeping that cycle going with some more pretty big nerfs headed his way this patch. They didn't even seem to totally gun him, so we'll be moving him down to the A tier for now, but consider this a bit tentative. He could totally belong lower if they hit him harder than we're expecting. 
Dr. Munoz also being dropped down to the A tier, and just like with Ramis, this could be overestimating how strong he'll be in this role. With him being both squishier and dealing less damage, his jungle clear is going to be a lot less healthier, and he'll be a lot more prone to being bullied by other picks. His scaling should be still pretty decent, but the issue is actually getting there. Targ gets a demotion to the A tier as well. Targ jungle is a bit of a quirky off meta pick, but when executed well, you can show that he's definitely still more than some cheese pick. He's definitely a legitimately strong pick, but the issue is the current meta isn't super great for him. He generally does super well to counter bruisers, assassins, and other high damage carries, but doesn't do super well against tanks and juggernauts that have become so meta-defining. Elise moves up to the A tier. She's another pick that we usually only see doing super well in the upper ranks, but lately, her early game aggression has been paying off pretty well in lower elos as well. The key to making Elise work is to perma gank early and try to close out the game as quickly as possible. That said, if you don't win by 15, not all hope is lost. But instead of grouping up and trying to 5v5, where she's borderline useless, just keep playing to gank side lanes. You can easily go for dives at the inner turns just as easily as diving during the laning phase. Due to him being so popular in the jungle right now, we'll be adding Silas to the list for this role as well, but don't be baited. He's picked a lot, but he's not all that strong. We'll be putting him in the B tier, with him bordering on dropping down to C. Jax has actually been looking okay in the jungle lately, but you want to be careful about blind picking him. He does well against a lot of the popular jungle matchups, but the rest of the enemy comp can be tough to play against sometimes. You should only lock him in when you see at least 3 or 4 of your opponents, so you know that you'll be able to play team fights later. With them being so situational, we'll be putting him in the B tier. Now here's our mid lane tier list. Zillion gets moved down to the S tier here. He's still a really solid pick for sure, but all the champions of the OP tier have just a bit more of an upper ceiling on how impactful they are in the game. Kale gets moted down to the A tier. Kale basically never gets direct changes. Instead, her strength is determined by what is common in her lane, as well as the general meta as a whole. You would think their ability to deal consistent DPS to tanks would make her good right now, but there are just too many mid laners to deal with to get consistent results. She's good, and you'll probably win the majority of games if you learn how to survive early on her. But you're also going to be running to quite a few games where you feel like you lose before you come online without much that you can do to stop it. I'm personally really glad that Riot is finally giving Lissandra some much needed attention. She's one of my favorite champions to play mid, and is overall just a really cool champion to have in the meta, since she can be used in some interesting ways. That being said, the buffs aren't anything crazy, so we'll be moving her up to the A tier for now. If you're really proactive on her, you can maybe consider her an S tier pick. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. As is the trend lately, the overall bot lane meta isn't really changing too much. The buffs and nurses patch are pretty small, and are only being done to champions at the middle of the pack. The first of these is a little buff to Zaya's base attack speed and attack speed ratio. This will help a bit, but with Zaya struggling so much recently, a bit probably won't be enough to make her relevant. We'll be moving her up to the B tier for now. Another change is a nerf to Zeri. For whatever reason, Riot absolutely hates the possibility that this champion is fun to play. Everything she's seen has been massive nerf since release. I was pretty hopeful that this little revamp that she got last patch would put her in a good spot, and it actually did. She's actually viable enough that you can enjoy her, but she's not oppressive. Her win rate has been around a 50% overall, with that of course going up quite a bit in higher ranks. But it's not like she's dominant enough up here that she demands nerfs. About 15 other bot lane picks perform better in Master Plus. Riot is really good at being the fun please sometimes. To finish things off, we have our supports. We'll be moving Zac up to the OP tier here. He's been performing super well, and I'd say that he's really competing with the Mumu for the title of the best engaged support at the moment. We'll be bumping Karma up again, landing her all the way up in the OP tier as well. Remember, this is only when you're abusing Radiant Virtue Karma. If you're still building Shirelias like most Karma players, she's still going to be a C or D tier pick. Radiant Virtue takes her from unviable to insanely strong. Renata's performance has fallen off quite a bit, so we'll be moving her down to the A tier. But I should note that in certain matchups, she's still insanely broken. Specifically, when the enemy team picks champs that want to force teamfights, Renata is an incredibly strong answer, so you can consider her S or even OP tier in those games. Seraphine moves up to the A tier. Seraphine's support isn't bad, but it's nowhere near as broken as playing her as a bot lane carry. That's because Seraphine scales really well with items. She has a super powerful kit, but for max effect, you need a really good amount of AP and more importantly, ability haste. It's obviously a lot harder to afford full expensive builds on a support budget. You'll still have a decent impact in most games, but it's a waste to not put her in a better role. We'll be moving Lulu up to the B tier. She's a bit of a situational pick. A lot of people consider Lulu to be some super elo inflating champion, but really, she's not. She's one of the weaker enchanters in the game. The thing is, she's just too focused on buffing up a single ally. Other picks like Sona, Janna, and Soraka are able to have a huge impact in fights because they're enabling and protecting the entire team. Lulu's kit only really works well for pocketing an ADC, and if you have a bad one, you're just kind of mediocre. I'd really only recommend playing her if you're duoed with an ADC that you can trust. 
And that about wraps things up for our 13.1 low elo tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Since making this list involves going all over the champions and all the roles, I'm sure we may have overlooked a pick here or there, so feel free to let us know if you think we missed something down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss the league further or just hang out and be part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.